Hey guys and welcome back. So now we're going to do another piece of uh, geometry that we want to add on top of the sim and um, this this is a simpler method to be honest and this is our geometry and this is the extra extra geometry I want to add on top. So these are just uh, flat boxes laid on top and they're not intersecting or anything. Again, they're not gonna contribute too much to the sim itself and they don't have a, a real connection, like they're not attached to the geometry very well. I mean, we can obviously do that if we wanted to. Using the same method, we can use uh, create points at each of these guys and then ray that into the geometry and uh, query the name attribute. Yeah, uh, so that that works, but I'm gonna use a simple connect adjacent uh, piece and create a constraint network that holds them up together, something like that. And let me copy this guy. And we have an uh, this guy is has a name attribute, so the geometry is is pre named already. And I'm gonna call this extra tiles, and we're gonna leave leave it to position and then I'm gonna pack this and send it to the RBD system out tiles tiles CST and let's go to this guy and I don't need this I'm gonna bypass it for now I also don't need this I need the the main appraise sim okay and I need a new constraint network let's paste that path and then a glue constraint network I'm gonna call the uh, set the same name I believe we did extra tiles and I'll give them 4000 uh, strength And I want them to break quickly, that's why. And let's do a merge node. And this time we can use an RBD packed object and it's just active pieces. So I'm gonna call this extra tiles. And let's go up, import the extra time let me double check the the name there. Cool. And let's connect this. Okay. So that's our tiles added with the constraint. I'm going to hide the constraint for now. And we could turn on Kong as well. And any other static objects for the rest of the of the sim. Okay, and let's hit play. And again, this part, uh, these pieces are not going to affect the sim in a major way, but they need to interact with it. So uh, another great example is to find places where you could add you know, a thin layer of geometries, some kind of uh, details that it could easily interact and starts moving. These type of effects are really, really cool because you still get all the core uh, movement from the sim, but you also get all this nice layering on top of each other. You can even add another super fine uh, uh, layer of these small boxes on top of it. We can add debris on here like small rocks and um, placed everywhere actually tried to scatter some points here we could sim those and uh, have it as you know as a debris pass for example and see it's just working now there's nothing that we have to worry about and the reason I didn't attach to or anything because I know it's gonna stick the way it was laid out uh, because of gravity but if we have to uh, 
if it was, for example, f uh, facing this wall, like a, a thin sheet of metal on top of this wall, we have to attach it somehow. And the glass is, uh, example is a great uh, idea for that. And I'll actually, I will show the, let me write a note. Show how to create a, I will show how to create a constraint in case, um, just to make sure that you guys uh, fully understood the workflow. And there it is. That's our extra geometry, fully simming and working. And the sim, we're not changing any, it's not gonna cause any issues or anything like that. Um, if for example, and, and this is a, another huge feature, if let's say we get a note, say, okay, I don't like how this is moving, we don't have to do the whole same, we can just change this and everything else will be the same because the RBD, uh, all this guy is driven by kinematics and only activating uh, based on conditions that we set up. So the glass, for example, if they say, okay, I don't like how the glass is fracturing, I wanna make, I wanna add more details or I wanna make it weaker or anything like that. We're not changing the SIM itself. We're just changing that block. Yes, we're paying for the, for all these guys, but uh, that's that's pretty much it. Everything else is the same. And if we wanted to go even fancier, we could even cache the high res here, uh, the, the main layer and the interior, and use that in a third SIM and have it uh, set to static, um, uh, animated static objects. And that way the upright SIM or the incoming SIM is never gonna change, only the extra bits, uh, extra pieces that we're going to add. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much it. That's how it works. Cool, so here, uh, when I did the tile, I'm going to assemble this, like we did it with the fuse, I'm gonna use a different trick. I'm gonna assemble this, pack primitives, and now they're just uh, points. And I'm gonna display them as centroids. So that's, that's my points. And I'm gonna delete Delete everything. Uh, yeah, let's do an add node. Delete geometry but key points. So now I have just points with a name attribute. And we have, where is it? I want the high res geometry of the up res. This guy, but before we pack it. So this guy, this one, and there's another block that we need to import as well. And that's the static part, this part, yep. So these are the two pieces. And I want them to be unpacked, but have a name attribute. And this is the case. Again, this is the final high-res uh, geo, okay? I'm gonna merge this together. And now with the add, I'm gonna do array node. And with array, we can use the minimum distance, but I'll use a project, uh, project, method, a project method. I'm gonna change it to vector, and the direction is going to be the negative y. Let's put down an all. And we should see a small snap, yep. Some pieces may not have, okay, this one had, yeah, some, some of these guys may not find or hit a geometry underneath them. And in that case, we may have to use the minimum distance so they at least they snap to the closest area. Okay, so we have we have that. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete the name attribute, and then import import the name attribute again. And let's make sure uh, we need to promote that. From point to prim. Don't delete the original one, and 
it's the other way from prim to point okay and let's uh, let's take one point Delete non selected. Delete non selected. And let's merge them. And we have to see four unique names. Yeah, this guy. Yep, four unique names. All good. So let's merge both of them. And let's do an add node. And we need uh, we need to create an ID attribute so we can track the points. So let's do that. ID is equal ptnum, and we want to connect by the ptnum uh, by the ID. And now we have primitives, and that's going to be our constraint network that will attach everything. Uh, you know what? Let's try. Let's try something else. Let's set this to a pin constraint. And uh, we'll do something else. Because the setup is, is simple, I'm going to transform the constraint by hand to move the anchor point somewhere else. And again, I haven't tried this, so if I fail, uh, pardon me. So I'm gonna move move it somewhere like that. No, the other way. I basically want the tile to rotate and spin on a point. Okay, let's try this. Let's do a primitive and uh, squeeze these guys into a single point. And this is going to be uh, all. I'm going to pin both and I'm going to change this to a hard uh, pin constraint. Let's go back inside the dock network. Okay, and let's do a hard constraint relationship. Obviously, we're not going to break it at the moment. And let's uh, visualize that. Cool. And let's see how that works. It may get a bit uh, unstable because uh, we moved the, the anchor point. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, we should we should set this properly. But basically, I wanted to give them a point and attach them to the wall so they can spin. I think they are attached right now, but just the anchor is not set up correctly. But I'll, I'll leave this to you guys. Uh, maybe I will spark an ID or two. So you can attach uh, active objects to static things. For example, we can attach, uh, you know, like signs and give them two pin constraints. Yeah, would they would be swinging. Uh, we're going to do the lamps next week. I think it's too much ready for this week. So we're going to leave the lamps for next week. And those guys have a bit more complex setup because a part of them is attached to the wall and the other part is swinging and active. So it's a, a two-layer system. Basically, we want to attach something and we want to add a pin constraint to something else so it swings. And maybe I should show... I should show a preview of that. Yep, so you can see the lamps here. And uh, let's find a different better shot. Cool. So you can see 
uh, the lamps are swinging part of them here is attached to the wall and then the rest is swing uh, swings and bounce and uh, there is a noise force before you can see they're swinging before it's just to mimic as if they're getting uh, some kind of shock wave and and things like that and you can see how this is attached there okay and that's the the glass obviously you can see it here it's all done through the same way the tiles the wood attachment is all the same like I showed and I think the tiles are working too here yeah they're they are attached okay Cool. I think that's uh, pretty much it for this week. See you guys in the next video.